place right over here. That's all I can see. Testing, testing public mic, Piper. Testing public mic, Piper, can you hear me?
paper. Data and light. You know, see if if
Good eve good evening. Good evening. Uh, Monica. Oh, there it is. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Monday, May 14th, 2018 meeting of the Durham County Board of Commissioners. I will share the public charge. The Board of Commissioners asks its members and citizens to conduct themselves in a respectful and courteous manner, both with the board and fellow citizens. At any time, should any member of the board or any citizen fail to observe this public charge, the chair will ask the offending person to leave the meeting until that individual regains personal control. Should decorum fail to be restored, the chair will recess the meeting until such time that a genuine commitment to the public charge is observed. As a courtesy to others, please turn off cell phones during the meeting. And I will now ask that we all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Do we have any adjustments to the agenda this evening? Okay, seeing there are no adjustments, I will move on to the announcements. Aging Well in Durham is inviting citizens to attend a free community event and resource fair on Saturday, May 19th, 2018. The event will be held at the Durham County Human Services Building located at 414 East Main Street from 10 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. with participant check-in starting at 9 o'clock a.m. This event is free of charge. However, registration is limited and required. All citizens are asked to register by calling 919-560-7393 or by emailing seniors at dconc.gov. So again, we want to encourage everyone um, to attend this. Uh, this is the third annual, I believe, Aging Well in Durham uh, Summit, and you can register at seniors at dconc.gov. Libraries Rock Summer Reading 2018. Join Durham County Library for a spectacular summer reading kickoff at Northgate Mall at the Plaza, 1058 West Club Boulevard on Saturday, June 9th from two, uh, 10 o'clock a.m. to 2 o'clock p.m. There will be activities, performers, face painters, and crafts planned for this event. And for more information, you can visit the website http colon double slash durhamcountylibrary.org. So also, uh, please go to the library website um, to find out how you can enroll your child for the summer reading program. Durham will be hosting the third annual tire recycling drive on June 2nd, 2018. If you have old or unused tires around your home, now is the time to get rid of them at no cost. Durham residents are encouraged to dispose of old tires at the City of Durham Waste Disposal and Recycling Center, 2115 East Club Boulevard, on Saturday, June 2nd from 8 o'clock a.m. until noon. And tire disposal is free and open to the public. And I want to add, this is also a health concern because we know that um, tires sitting around can collect water and be breeding grounds for mosquitoes. So it's a great opportunity to get rid of these uh, health hazards uh, on your property as well. Durham County's General Services Department will temporarily close the Rougemont Convenience Site located at 108 Bill Pool Road on Thursday, May 17th, 2018, 
at 2 p.m. for maintenance, and there are additional convenience sites operated by the county that you can use. Um, uh, so please, uh, the convenience sites users are reminder, reminded that is prohibited to leave trash, garbage, or recyclables outside the gates um, when the convenience sites are closed. And the three other sites are uh, the Parkwood site, number one, 5928 Highway 55, the HEMA site, number two, 9008 Quail Roost Road, and the Redwood site, number three, 100 Electra Road. And for more information, uh, you can contact the Solid Waste Program Manager for General Services, Chrissy Corvoyview uh, at 919-560-0433 or email her at mcorvoyview at dconc.gov. And lastly, the Durham City County Planning Department is holding a public information meeting to discuss proposed, proposed revisions to Durham sign regulations and provide an opportunity to ask questions and provide comments. This will be on May 31st, 2018, from 4 to 6 p.m. Uh, in the City Council Chambers, uh, first floor of City Hall, 101 City Hall Plaza. You can contact Michael Stock at 919-560-4137 at uh, extension 28. 227, and these announcements will all be available also on the Durham County website. Are there other announcements? Commissioner Recco? Uh, commissioners, I put at your places a conference report. I've sent it electronically, but there's an attachment to it that I didn't have a digital copy of. That's a valuable addition to the report. It highlights what some of the major milestone achievements in South Carolina. Essentially, uh, <clears throat> I outline the strategies that they are undertaking. The good news for us is several of the strategies have been placed um, and have been very successful, but several are not placed. And I think we have opportunities to gain greater efficiency, effectiveness, and perhaps most importantly, equity um, for some of these strategies. So I hope you'll look at it. I'd be happy to discuss it. Thank you very much. Commissioner Howerton. I just want to thank the director. Um, and I just want to add um, for our viewers and for everyone sitting here that um, we know that on Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, May 16th, uh, that Durham Public Schools will be closed to support um, our teachers being able to go to Raleigh uh, to be able to support um, public schools and, and public education in our state. And I just want to let parents know that the community has organized to provide meals uh, on that day and that there will be um, an extension of the summer uh, feeding program at 13 different schools that will pr be providing breakfast as well as lunch. And so just to let uh, parents know uh, that breakfast will be served from 7.30 to um, 9.30 a.m as well as lunch from 11 to 1. And the schools are Bethesda, Club Boulevard, Eastway, Eno Valley, Glen, uh, Aaron Harris, Hillendale, and Sandy, Sandy Ridge and Southwest Elementary Schools. The middle schools are Giffins and uh, Lakewood Montessori and Shepherd, and also at the Southern uh, High School uh, will also be providing that. Or, um, Madam Chair, community. also the YMCA involved in that whole process. They are uh, taking in a lot of take care of them. They as well. So the all the YMCA. The YMCA downtown YMCA. Yeah, downtown. Thank yes. you. 
Okay, um, we have before us the minutes from the PAC-1 meeting of April 21st, 2018. Moved by Commissioner Carter, Howerton. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the minutes are unanimously approved. We have a number of ceremonial items this evening. And the first is in honor of Foster Care Awareness Month. And I can see we have uh, Ben Rose with us this evening, our DSS director. And I want to make sure I didn't leave anyone out else from, I think Sharon Flood, I saw our program director. Thank you. Uh, so I will first read the proclamation and then love to hear more from both of you. Foster Care Month 2018, Durham Board of County Commissioners Proclamation. Whereas the family serving as the primary source of love, identity, self-esteem and support is the foundation of our communities and of our state and whereas over 40, 400,000 American children are in foster care because their own families are in crisis and are unable to provide for their essential well-being, and whereas there are 10,236 children in foster care in North Carolina because their own families are in crisis and unable to provide for their essential well-being, and where is foster families who open their homes and hearts and offer help to children whose families are in crisis play a vital role in helping children and families to heal and reconnect and launching children into successful adulthood. And whereas in Durham County, there are 288 children and youth in foster care as of April 1st, 2018, being provided with a safe, secure, and stable home along with the compassion and nurture of a foster family. And whereas the needs of the foster care population result in a greater call for skilled foster families, community resources, and partnerships. And whereas the Durham County foster care system depends on the active support and involvement of the Durham community, and whereas the Durham County Department of Social Services is joined by numerous individuals, public and private organizations who work to increase public awareness of the needs of children in and leaving foster care, as well as the enduring and valuable contribution of foster parents. The Durham County Department of Social Services acknowledges that the foster care system is only as good as those who choose to be part of it. Therefore, partnerships on the state, county, and community levels are critical to the success of the foster care system. Now, there be it resolved, I, Wendy Jacobs, Chair of the Durham Board of County Commissioners, and on behalf of the Durham Board of County Commissioners, do hereby proclaim May 2018 as Foster Care Month in Durham County. I commend this observance to our community and I urge all citizens to come forward and do something positive that will help raise hope and foster dreams of children and youth in foster care. The 14th day of May 2018. Wendy Jacobs, Chair of Durham County Board of Commissioners. So, thank you, Ben and Sharon, for being with us for this important proclamation. Thank you, thank you, listeners. We are very happy to present foster care is probably one of the critical services we provide. One of the biggest reasons why I. Proclamation really home. This is truly a community service. We are the state that we do what we do without our foster without our guardian ad litem. We are very grateful. They bring this proclamation 
bring awareness about the needs of our We had this is up. So much it was six years ago it was children, babies and hospital with your residential place only. So we really appreciate to, to the public that we are so grateful for our hospital. They are truly who we are honoring. Think about what they do and the sacrifice they make to provide care for Truly amazing. We are so appreciative of all that they do. Have lots of events planned and made to celebrate. I'll let you. This is her program and her baby. Share a little bit as well. Thank you. Um, I just want to add that the numbers rise frequently. And so as of May the 4th, we are at 124 of those reside outside. And while we do use May as a month to bring awareness, we also want to enhance our with our tagline of and we encourage people who are in love in their home and room in their home to accept the child in as a foster. We only have 81 homes in Durham right now. You can do the math. I'm not a math, but there's not enough homes in for these. And so it's unfortunate that our children are all across the state of North Carolina, which puts further demands on our social workers to have to stay busy. But once he still is school days, South Carolina. So again, I just encourage the community to. Think about fostering. We accept donations, we accept volunteers, but right now, I think if you had to say, would be to ask your friends, ask your neighbor, ask your civic organization, anywhere that you have a participant, to consider fostering a child. Thank you, um, Sharon and Ben. And Sharon, could you tell us? about some of the activities um, this month and also a um, how people can contact you if they are interested in finding out more about being a foster parent. We did do an In Touch with Durham County episode about this uh, recently, but um, if you could just share with people how they could find out more. Um, I do know that this is uh, celebrating They seem to like the idea of having an opportunity to play adults involved in We'll celebrate at uh, Frankie's Fun Park. Um, we have our radio ads currently playing uh, on 103.9 as well as 107.5, I do believe. I do definitely know on 103.9. I've heard it a couple of times already. Um, the top of my head, I'm sorry, Commissioner Jacobs, I can't think of anything else right now. We'd, we've been doing some things internally. We've taken a picture uh, here at Durham County for National Awareness Month, and there's a, a social media site that that picture can be plugged to just across the nation. Uh, everyone celebrated, actually, the first Tuesday in May, but we didn't get to take our picture for the 8th, but still, we did it in this month. Um, People can contact our foster parent recruiter, Deborah Cousin, and the telephone number is 919-560-8092. That is our inquiry line that she mans daily. And if she does not pick up when they call, she will return a call or an email uh, immediately afterwards if she's on the line. Um, the email escapes me right now, but we have plenty of activities uh, planned for our foster parents and foster families. Okay, great, thank you. Mr. Howerton. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just have a quick question. 
regarding when you when you said um, 104 children are outside of, of Durham County. Uh, could you share a little bit more information about how that process, in other words, how do we keep up with those children when they're transferred outside of Durham County? When you say, how do we keep up with them? So we are mandated as social workers to uh, know where our children are, uh, to make visits within uh, seven days of their placements, as well as within three days, making sure that they've had the proper medical, physicals uh, after entering foster care. And so I'm not sure if I'm answering your question. When you say we track all of our data, so, and it's actually the number is 124. As okay, a, so, so it's just understanding how that process works when children are transferred outside of Durham County. It's not like you can run over and check on them every day, but just, I just wanted to understand how that works. But when a child comes into foster care and there are no fam foster family homes available in Durham that will take a particular child with whatever needs they may have, their age, then we go and work with our partners, as Mr. Rose mentioned earlier, our private providers. There are some children who are in therapeutic foster homes who don't necessarily need therapeutic care, but therapeutic agencies do provide private traditional placements such as families that are licensed by Durham County DSS. So it's a search thing. We have placement staff who keep lists of private providers all across the state and some still in Durham as well who have openings. And so it's a matter of getting on the phone. We call from place to place to place. We give them background information about each child and then they let us know if they have a family that can accommodate that child. Okay. Thank you. Just just a quick follow-up to that, too. Some children that are placed out of county may be in kinship placements, so they're not all in foster family necessarily, or they may be in residential placement because of the needs of the child. Um, however, we, you know, 81 foster homes, we definitely have a higher goal, and we'd like to have more resources locally with our own developed foster homes. We have an excellent team that does licensing of our foster homes. They really work hard. We do several MAP classes a year. I've attended quite a few of them since being here already just in six months. It's, it's, a, it's a process you know, to get licensed, but it's well worth it. And we, we know that we have good quality homes when we license a home and we have people we can feel confident with put placing our children there. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you for being here. Okay, we, next we have a proclamation for uh, recognizing National Drug Court Month. And I see we have um, Judge Fred Battaglia here with us. We have Roshana Parker from uh, Criminal Justice Resource Center. And let's see, I don't think Kamisha is here. Somebody else is here. <laughs> so I will let you introduce who else is with you, um, Judge Battaglia. So, Thank you all so much for being with us uh, for this also important commemoration. And I'll have Mr. Howerton is going to share the resolution, the uh, proclamation. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. It's my pleasure to read this proclamation. Durham Board of County Commissioners Proclamation, National Drug Month, Drug Court Month, 2018. Whereas there are now more than 3,000 treatment courts nationwide, and whereas treatment courts are a cornerstone of justice reform sweeping the nation, and whereas just treatment courts have served more than 1.4 million individuals, and whereas they are now recognized as the most successful justice system intervention in our nation's history, and whereas they save up to $27 for every $1 invested and up to 
dollars for every individual they serve. And whereas treatment courts significantly, significantly improve substance use disorder treatment outcomes, substantially reduce addiction and related crime, and do so at least expense, at less expense than any other criminal justice strategy. And whereas the treatment courts improve education, employment, housing, and financial stability, promote family reunification, reduce foster care placements, and increase the rate of addiction, addicted mothers delivering babies who are fully drug free. And whereas treatment courts facil facilitate community-wide partnerships, bringing together public safety and public health professionals. And whereas treatment courts demonstrate that when one person rises out of substance use and crime, we all rise. And whereas the time has come to put a treatment court within reach of every eligible person in need, now, therefore, be it resolved, Wendy Jacobs, Chair of the Board of County Commissioners, and on behalf of the Board of County Commissioners, do hereby proclaim the month of May 2018 as National Drug Court Month in Durham County and urge all citizens to observe this month with appropriate programs, activities, and ceremonies to support this year's theme, Justice for All the 14th day of May, 2018. Thank you. And thank you all for being here. Um, and we would love to hear what may be planned for, uh, for this month <coughs> to celebrate drug court. Uh, I think we are all, Durham County is very proud to support the drug court program and um, Tied to our first proclamation related to foster care, it's another way that we can help support families um, and parents being able to stay at home and take care of their children. Thank you, Commissioner Jacobs. We're excited to be here tonight. Um, I am Roshana Parker with the Criminal Justice Resource Center. I have Judge Fred Battaglia, who is our team leader for Drug Treatment Court, and then we also have Shavana Thomas representing probation. Um, you mentioned Kamisha Falana. She has been the drug court um, coordinator for us for about the last five years. And unfortunately, but congratulations to her. She's no longer with us. She left on last Friday to take another position. But we are definitely um, proud of her and excited about all the great work she has done for Durham Drug Treatment Court. Um, drug Court Month is recognized by the National Association of Drug Court Professionals every year. It gives us an opportunity to celebrate all of the hard work that treatment courts across the nation, not just drug courts, but all treatment courts do to re reunify families and really try to get at the root of some of the issues and problems. And one of the great things about drug court is that it represents a team approach. We only have two of our team members here today, but we have about nine or ten team members that represent various agencies and disciplines throughout the community that are really there to provide wraparound services and support for individuals who are struggling with the disease of addiction and really trying to help them live a drug-free life. But we're excited about um, the proclamation being presented tonight. We do have, we are in the process of planning one event for our drug court participants, a reception at CGRC, which will be either um, May 23rd or 24th. We have not finalized that, but once we do, we will publish that date and get it out to everybody. At this time, I'm going to let Judge Battaglia talk a little bit more about the goals we have for the future of Durham's drug court. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I'd like to thank you for this opportunity to talk with you all, and we want to thank the county commissioners, taxpayers of Durham, for their foresight to have a drug treatment court. It's, it's a privilege to serve as that, as the judge in that particular courtroom, and it's an honor, and it's um, it's such a privilege to see someone who's struggling with addiction overcome these obstacles, both addiction and housing, and to restore someone or have them to restore themselves to the community and their family. And it truly is an honor to watch. And, and I know, Commissioner Jacobs, you come to uh, graduations, I believe you've been to one. 
Commissioner Carter, and I, we would invite everyone to come to graduation. It's a very moving experience, and um, it's restorative in its truest sense, and the population that we serve right now are predominantly African American and poor, and so 90% uh, are probably African American and there's some other, but it's, um, it's a privilege to watch them part of it and to encourage and sometimes to sanction folks and uh, but it's not punishment and we have enough people in prison we have 38,000 people across North Carolina that are incarcerated at present time we have 500 people in our Durham County Jail at any one particular time and it's it's a privilege to be part of the process where people are not going to prison I don't know how other ways to say it, that um, of those 38,000, probably 36,000 are going to come out back in our state. Try to not have them go to prison, bring them in to work. And most of our folks work. And Mr. Jacobs, you were just in an interview with Kenneth, good friend Kenneth, and uh, he's quite uh, a great individual. Honored to, uh, to be part of the process, his process. But, um, can't tell you thank you enough. It's an honor to come here every year, and it's a privilege. And I, and I really thank you for having the vision and the foresight. Because not every county has a, a jerk board. And so thank you all, Commissioner, your continued support. We wish we could do more, but we're thankful. We're very thankful for what we have. We have Gudrun. Where's Gudrun? The, our fearless leader back there, Gudrun Palmer. She oversees us and keeps us going. And, and I know you all know her, but thank you very much for the opportunity with you, and thank you for your support. All of you, thank you. Well, thank you, and thank you all for your role in making the drug court possible. Um, any comments or from any commissioners? Uh, so I, you know, we just recently did an In Touch with Durham County episode about, about the drug court, and uh, Kenneth, who was one of the graduates, was on there, and he now is part of the team. Uh, he's he's helping to mentor uh, and do peer support with some of the other uh, people who are in the program. Uh, so, you know, this is part of what we're trying to do to, as Judge Battaglia said, keep people out of the jail who don't need to be there and preserve families and uh, reconnect people to, um, to work and being productive members of society. So, so thank you all. Let me just Yes, just Commissioner Howerton. One thing, you know, I just want to say to the public, you know, we go to these conferences, and this was one of the initiatives that uh, Commissioner Reckhal and I saw years ago when we went to a conference and we came back and, and we talked about it and talked about it and talked about it at nausea until we finally were, were able to get it in place. So when we go to these conferences, we go looking for stuff. We go looking for stuff that we can grow, bring back to help our citizens. And this was the one that we brought back. And, and Gudrun and her team and the judges took it on. And we, we really appreciate the work that you do. Well, I'll just follow up on what Brenda said. I believe we came back and then we were looking for funding. Yeah. And we weren't getting any from the state and whatever. So then the county stepped up. And put it so, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, we are always looking at ways to improve our criminal justice system, and this clearly is one um, definite improvement, and we thank Judge Paglia for his leadership. Yeah. And we have just also started a mental health court this year. Um, so again, with the same purpose. Um, so it takes judges and other, other employees to be part of the team to make it all happen. As you said, it's about teamwork, uh, so thank you all. Thank you.
I didn't. He said, <laughs> thank you. Okay, and we also have this evening, uh, May is a very busy month. <laughs> we also have a proclamation for older Americans month um, for May of 2018. And I will ask Commissioner Carter if she could please share that. And we have Ben Rose with us, and I don't think I see Janine here with us. So just you again, Ben. <laughs> Durham Board of County Commissioners Proclamation, Older Americans Month 2018. Whereas Durham includes a community of over 50,000 older Americans who abundantly contribute to our county, state, and nation, and whereas the older residents of Durham County represent a remarkable and expanding movement in our nation, our state, and our community's demographic makeup, and whereas Durham recognizes that older adults are visionaries who continue to contribute to their family, their community, our county, state, and nation's social and economic well-being as they live longer, healthier, and more prolific lives. And whereas Durham is attuned to the opportunities and challenges that lie ahead, which require us to think differently about health and well-being, aging in place, and long-term care, and will work together to ensure that older adults can age strong, long, and with dignity. And whereas, we appreciate the value of inclusion and support in helping older adults successfully contribute to and benefit from their communities and will work toward creating an age-friendly Durham. And whereas, our community can provide opportunities to engage at every age by nurturing an age-friendly community through the recognition and engagement of older adults, seeking the mentorship of someone with more life experience, involving older adults in redefining aging well in our community, emphasizing that you are never too old or too young to take part in activities that can enrich your physical, mental, and emotional well-being, and providing assistive technologies and support systems that allow older adults to participate in social activities in the community. Now, therefore, be it resolved, I, Wendy Jacobs, chair of the Durham Board of County Commissioners, and on behalf of the Durham Board of County Commissioners, do hereby proclaim the month of May 2018 as Older Americans Month in Durham County. We commend this observance to our residents and urge all citizens, community agencies, faith groups, medical facilities and businesses to join with the Department of Social Services, the Durham Center for Senior Life, Dementia Inclusive Durham, and Durham's Partnership for Seniors Committee to honor older adults and those who care for them during May and throughout the year. We urge all to promote and participate in activities that contribute to helping older Americans make choices for a healthy and satisfying future. The 14th day of May, 2018, Wendy Jacobs, Chair, Durham Board of County Commissioners. Thank you, Commissioner Carter. And uh, we, um, again, we will be having a um, summit this Saturday uh, about um, Durham being an age-friendly community. So I want to remind people about that opportunity. And we also just heard um, a livability report presented to the city and county uh, last week uh, about how livable Durham is for its seniors. So we. We have a lot to work on getting ready for our senior population that will double um, in 15 years, a very short amount of time. So Ben, I'd love for you to just talk a little bit further about um, this issue and, and whatever else you want to share with us. Well, thank you again. And never let it be said, DSS does not cover the array of age. Since we were here talking about children just a few minutes ago, now we're talking about older adults. And as I'm becoming an older um, adult, I uh, really appreciate all that we're doing in Durham. And social services in this area, really our mission is about quality of life for our seniors. Our services are geared towards enhancing the quality of life and well-being of seniors, making sure that they have the basic needs to live. Primarily, one of the biggest goals we try to do is keep them safe at home as long as we can. You know, as, as you become older, you don't want to be living in an adult care home or a nursing home at all possible, so we gear a lot of services around keeping people in the home as long as we can. One of the biggest things that we do, I believe, is keeping adults, elderly and disabled adults, 
adult abuse and neglect and exploitation is just as prevalent now as it ever was. In fact, it's been rising over the years. When we saw the economic crisis in 2008, 2009, 2010, we saw a huge increase in exploitation of our seniors. So we really take that service just like we do child welfare, just as this, to make sure we're ensuring our adults are safe and protected. Um, a lot of the issues we deal with in that area are regarding self-neglect, honestly, as well, too. Someone that may be living alone, not, unable to care for themselves. So we really take pride in those services we provide. And, and again, Durham County is an is a outstanding county. We're a shining model in this state in terms of the, what we do to go up and above the call of our, of our mandates. Our funding is very limited in the adult and aging world. It's usually capped. It's usually grants. But Durham County contributes hundreds of thousands of dollars to these services um, that they are not required to do. And I'm just you know, continuously amazed at the support that we have in Durham County and all the efforts that are going on about making this a age-friendly community. So we're proud to celebrate this month with our partners. As you saw, there was a good list of partners there that we worked with. And we're happy to uh, bring this message to the public as well, too, that we care about our seniors just as much as we do our children, and they're all equally important. So thank you. Thank you, Ben. Uh, any other comments from commissioners? Uh, Commissioner at Brecko? Well, you know, I'm pleased we're moving forward uh, to try to make Durham a more age-friendly community because, as has been pointed out, if we make it more friendly for our elderly, we'll make it more friendly for everyone else. And one area that I've been particularly alarmed with is um, pedestrian fatalities. We're the fifth highest state in the country, pedestrian fatalities. And um, I think it's a crying shame. Uh, so by improving our so-called walk score and making things safer, we also help the elderly, but also everyone else be safer. So uh, it's a good thing to be doing. If it's, uh, if it's safe for our, our seniors and our children, don't get caught in the crossfire. Absolutely. Isn't that right, Ben? Very much. So. Absolutely. But we will um, be looking at this issue, I'm sure, in our coming budget um, because, unfortunately, we know there's great need. Um, as Ben mentioned, we don't get a lot of money at the federal or state level. Uh, and so it falls to us at the local level. But as we look at helping people age in place and stay at home, we know we have waiting lists for Meals on Wheels and for in-home in -home care. So, so thank you again, Ben. Thank you. And all of your staff. Thank for you. For all your help. Thank you. This evening, we will be hearing uh, the manager's recommended fiscal year 2018-19 recommended budget. Thank you. Good evening, Chair Jacobs, members of the Board of County Commissioners, county staff, and of course, Durham County residents. It is an honor to present to you my recommended budget for fiscal years, year 2018-19. And I will first say what a difference a year makes. Changes at the national, state, and local levels remind us that the only constant is change itself. Guided by a strategic plan, Realigning funds and priorities based on managing for results and continually reimagining what it means to live, grow, and thrive in Durham County is part of that change. My recommended budget through funding decisions reflects Durham County's response to internal and external pressures 
in order to continue developing into a results-based organization that is a point of pride and a community of choice for all residents. We continue to wrestle with a host of vexing social challenges, such as in migration at the rate of 20 new residents per day, a growing child poverty rate, homelessness, income inequality, low educational achievement, and increasing opioid addiction, to name a few. The jobs and human capital needed to face these issues cannot be ignored. To navigate these complex dynamics and to keep Durham County on course for a brighter tomorrow, the Board of County Commissioners has a guiding strategic plan. This document consists of five strategic goals and related objectives and strategies which tie together service delivery within departments. This plan places a higher priority on collaboration amongst departments and the community, but also performance management, the managing for results model at its core. This budget addresses important issues while protecting our fiscal standing. It also represents a strategic realignment of existing dollars within departmental operating budgets of nearly $2 million, which supports new positions and inflationary costs. The recommended budget also supports critical programs and service delivery needs for Durham Public Schools and the important and expensive task of providing increased pre-K support to Durham County children. And it also recognizes our greatest assets, our human capital, by proactively dealing with compensation and classification issues. Further, it provides for operational increases in public safety areas to address mental health support at our detention center, emergency medical services training needs, and fire services in the county. Funding is also provided to replace and update vital public safety equipment and vehicles to ensure quality service delivery. To do all of these necessary things, I'm recommending a 1.9 cent property tax increase for fiscal year 2018-19. From current year to next, we project countywide total property tax valuation growth of just under 4%, or $1.4 billion. This is more than double the property valuation growth seen in recent years. This, that is a reflection of the change seen in Durham County and, of course, Durham's skyline over the last several years. This growth adds property tax revenue of $10.9 million before any potential property tax rate increases. Places like downtown and the Research Triangle Park, while extraordinarily important to the economic vitality of Durham County, continue to evolve, as does the valuation of those properties. We are projecting our tax collection rate to stay at 99.6%, which is exceptional, and of course, a true testament to the skills of Kim Simpson, our tax administrator, and her staff in the tax administration department. I would ask that you keep in mind that valuation growth and the associated new residents bring with it increasing demands for county services. We budgeted property tax revenue in two categories. One, to support general fund expenses, and the other, to support the capital financing fund, which funds capital projects and, of course, debt service. 
The overall property tax rate is recommended to increase by 1.9 cent to the general support to support general fund needs, including additional funding for Durham Public Schools, operating increases across a number of departments, compensations and benefits increases, and new position support. For a $200,000 home, this tax rate increase equals about $38 per year. The cost to support expanding county service, expanded county services and also provide for a fast growing population puts continued pressure on the property tax as the main source of Durham County funding while other revenues are in fact slowing in growth. As part of developing an interlocal agreement with the city to consolidate fire protection and first responder services in the southern part of the county, a two cent increase in the property tax rate for the Durham County Fire and Rescue Service District is also required. This increase, which would have been necessary even without this merger, is needed to pay for the consolidated services, which will in fact maintain our lower insurance rates for residents and in the business district. Property tax rates for all of the county special tax districts remain unchanged for fiscal year 2018-19. The total amount of budgeted sales tax revenue for next fiscal year is $81.8 million. For perspective, this is the equivalent of 22 cents of property tax revenue. The estimated current year collections is expected to grow minimally, and next year we are estimating a 1.9% increase in total budgeted sales tax. This is lower growth than experienced in previous years. And it's largely due to the state legislative changes that moved a portion of sales tax from urban to more rural counties. We must be aware of this trend and adapt budget choices now and in the future that can be sustainable within this new environment. While the general fund is where the vast majority of daily activity and spending for government services occur, there are a number of other funds that serve specific county financial and operational purposes. These include the already mentioned special tax districts, the debt service fund, and our sewer utility fund. The total county budget, including all of these funds, increases 1.8% to over $644.5 million, while the general fund, which is a subset of that total amount, increases 0.16% to $435.5 million. Our annual debt service amount to $73.4 million for fiscal year 2018-19. You can see the largest single amount of the debt service payment supports county-related capital projects, largely because of two major projects currently under construction, the renovated Admin 2 building and the renovation of the main library. Durham Public Schools debt comes in at the next highest amount. Debt service payments are expected to increase in the future years as recently approved bond referendum dollars are issued. During an upcoming budget work session, the board will review the current capital financing plan supporting this debt. Almost 79% of our general fund budget is generated from taxes, with property taxes and sales taxes comprising most of that category. The amount of overall revenue supported by taxes continues to grow as a percentage of the general fund budget 
as other revenue sources grow at slower rates or even decrease. We will need to pay close attention to how we fund future needs given this emerging trend. Intergovernmental revenue, which comes from local, state, and federal partners, is the next highest category, with most of those dollars supporting our human services operations. Fees make up a smaller but important portion of the total revenue. The largest fee collectors include emergency medical services and the Register of Deeds. Appropriated fund balance is the largest part of other revenue and is budgeted at $16.5 million, lessening the need for the use of revenue sources, including property taxes. The largest expenditure area continues to be education, which includes Durham Public Schools and Durham Technical Community College. The next largest function is general government, but largely due to transfer of dollars, due to a transfer of dollars to other funds, which accounts for 54% of that total. Some examples include transfers to the Capital Finance Fund, Debt Service Fund, Risk Management Fund, and of course the Benefits Fund. Human services is where the social services and public health departments reside. After that comes public safety, who's, second, who's the second largest department and are the sheriff's office and of course the emergency medical services operations. I wanna transition now and talk about a few highlights on some of the major items funded within goal one, which is community empowerment and enrichment. The single largest expenditure for Durham County is Durham Public Schools, with funding of $137 million, or 31.5% of the entire general fund budget. I am recommending the total DPS budget increase of $3 million, using a combination of property tax do dollars and Article 46 sales tax as directed by county commissioner's policy. County financial support for Durham Public Schools extends farther than just our annual current expense funding. The county supports 27 school resource offices, also known as SROs, a $2.5 million uh, budget for public health school nurses, and an additional $77,500 that support other related nonprofits. And then, of course, there's $2.9 million that supports school nurses. And finally, the county will pay an estimated $33.2 million in debt service related to DPS voter-approved general obligation bond issues for school capital support. Durham Public Schools enrollment is estimated to grow 165 students in the upcoming year, while charter schools are expected to decrease by over 310 students. Overall, the number of students within both systems that will receive county funding decreases by a net of 145. We have consistently stayed among the top five North Carolina county governments in local funding per student. And with my recommendation, Durham County will maintain that position with local funding of $3,400 per pupil which is an increase of $88. When comparing the top funded county school systems in North Carolina, Durham ranked number three in 2017-18 behind Dare and Orange. Among the largest school districts in the state, Durham has the highest local per pupil funding. Our neighbor, Wake County, is $783 lower for 2018-19, while Forsyth, a demographically similar county, is over $1,000 lower per pupil. 
illustrate it differently, what this means is Durham County will spend $37 million more next year on public school education, controlling for school population than Forsyth County. For Durham Technical Community College, increased funding supports salary adjustments and other operational and capital costs. As the county continues to collect revenue from the quarter cents Article 46 sales tax, Durham Technical Community College will receive over $1.3 million for student scholarship support in the upcoming year. The total county support for Durham Technical Community College is $7.5 million. County funding for the Museum of Life and Science is $1.8 million. Continuing operating support for one of Durham County's most unique learning environments. Also, the recently approved general obligation bond referendum supports a little over $14 million for museum capital improvements. For a second year, my budget recommendations in, in recommendation includes $1.5 million for operation of eight additional preschool classrooms at the renovated Whitted School. I'm also proposing continued support for Duke's Durham Children's Data Center as we look carefully to evaluate preschool and other key childhood investments over time. To continue towards universal pre-K support for all Durham's children, I am recommending an additional $3.7 million be allotted for expansion of pre-K services for a total pre-K funding amount of $5.2 million. While acknowledging that the financial burden of making high quality preschool available to every four-year-old in Durham is a heavy lift, the alternatives for our most vulnerable and underserved children is unacceptable. To support the Durham Communities Education Preschool Task Force recommendation, I want to put these resources forward as a challenge grant with the hope that they can be matched by private and philanthropic funding and reinvestment of public school funding so that the universal pre-K in Durham is supported by multiple community partners. Together, we can find resources to address this important issue with the ultimate goal of providing every child access to pre-K education, which positively impacts our entire community. Your support for Health and Human Services continues to be demonstrated by the significant funding provided for programs and nonprofit organizations that support this strategic goal area. We continue to focus on the cross-sector work that must be done to create a healthy Durham, a Durham where all residents have the opportunity to achieve optimal health outcomes. We understand that Good health is a state of physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. And we are working hard to address these disparities in health and quality of life outcomes that exist within our community. In February, the Department of Social Services received approval for six new positions within Child Protective Services to move us closer to the caseload standard of one worker per 10 cases. Since 2013, compensation and pension dollars captured by the Veterans Services Office for county veterans has increased 40%, but the unmet need is still significant. So this recommended budget includes one additional veteran services officer to continue supporting veterans access 
the rightful benefits. Public health staff realign existing resources after evaluating program performance. Deciding to transition staff from the Healthy Futures Program to the School Health Program. This retains highly qualified public health nurses within the, de the department while reducing the nurses to student ratio, continuing an ongoing commitment by the Board of Commissioners to increase school nurses in Durham Public Schools. The number of restaurants and food trucks continue to increase in our community as well. We are a few foodie destination for a reason. And as a result, staff have an increased number of mandated inspections to conduct. And I'm therefore recommending the addition of three new positions to respond to this increased inspection workload. Extensive renovations and expansions to the current main library facility are well underway and we are continuing to prepare for its unveiling. I am requesting final year funding to support the purchase of the opening day collection for a planned 2019 opening. I'm also recommending the librarian position at the East Regional Branch Library. Protecting residents and creating a safe community continues to be a top priority of the county's strategic plan. Increased investments in the Sheriff's Office, the Detention Center, Emergency Medical Services, and Emergency Management are the primary new investments for Goal 3. The proposed new and reallocated spending I am recommending will continue to address our critical public safety needs. Well-trained EMS staff are essential to providing high-quality clinical care to residents in need. For staff to maintain high-quality care, I'm recommending a training division be created using reallocated positions. This new training division will provide continuous education to the county's EMS system. Having an in-house training resource provides greater opportunity to transition our emergency medical technicians into paramedics, supporting the goal of reducing the chronic difficulty in hiring new paramedics. I am recommending an additional community paramedic also from a reallocated position. As we continue to analyze the outcomes of this pilot program, it has become apparent that there are a significant number of patients who could benefit from this proactive approach to preventive medicine. In addition, I am proposing continued replacement and upgrading of EMS ambulances by replacing five at a cost of over $1.1 million using appropriated community health fund dollars. For the Sheriff's Office, I am recommending a total of 20 new positions and equipment to address critical safety and security needs. Five new school resource offices are included in response to the City of Durham no longer providing these services. With this investment, the county will be funding 27 school resource officers in Durham's middle and high schools. I also am recommending funding for body cameras for all SROs bringing the county's total investment in school resource offices to $2.5 million. Additionally, two new deputies are recommended to strengthen support for victims of domestic violence and meet existing workload demands. In fiscal year 2016-17, the board approved funding to open a mental health unit for male detainees in the detention center. The unit opened in the fall of 2017 and has proven to be a valuable resource 
in addressing the needs of detainees with mental health issues. The Sheriff's Office has requested funding to open a mental health unit for female detainees as well. I support this request and recommend that 13 new detention officers be hired to staff this, extend, this expanded service. Additional proposed public safety investments focus on the Fire Marshal's Office, City County Emergency Management, and the Fire and Rescue Division. I'm recommending a hazmat planner to manage hazardous material plan submissions and to assist Durham businesses with federal regulatory compliance. Per the existing agreement with the city, the cost of this position will be split evenly. We are also supporting a new fee related to the type of hazardous material stored, which is estimated to generate approximately $40,000 this year. As discussed earlier, I am continuing to support the consolidation of Durham County's Fire and Rescue Services with the city. Capitalizing on existing infrastructure of the city's fire department will provide a more sustainable and efficient fire protection and first responder services for these residents in the southern part of our county. This fiscal year, the county will continue to focus on strategic environmental and infrastructure investments aligned with our strategic plan and community goals. This work includes improvements to our utility systems in the Research Triangle Park, supporting our reinvestment in Park Center, and economic growth, of course, in RTP. Additionally, we will make investments in infrastructure for Traburn Business and Industrial Park, as the park is a significant asset in attracting diverse manufacturing jobs. Work on the Administration II building renovations has progressed, and occupancy is anticipated in the late summer, early fall of 2018. Construction is also well underway for our main library renovations with completion currently anticipated in late 2019. Additionally, we are now at a point where key investments must be made in public safety facilities. And with these issues and the current and projected workloads, coupled with the demand for additional special studies and initiatives, I am recommending two project manager positions be added to the project management team. Durham County continues to be a location of choice for employers. And with that in mind, I have recommended an increase in economic development incentive support of over a half million dollars for agreements that we signed within the last year. Additional grant funding from the One North Carolina Fund will support needed infrastructure investments, while additional county funding of $250,000 will support infrastructure preparations for Traburn Business Park. The Enterprise Fund Utility Division continues to expand the extension of reclaimed water services and interlocal agreements with our surrounding municipalities and Research Triangle Park businesses. We will be adjusting user rates over the next several years to allow for a number of future projects. I am also recommending a new utility technician position to provide support services in a number of areas from field work to the compliance lab. And we will also be implementing a new capital fee structure related to legislative changes. During the past year, the county has made major strides in developing tools and investments to further the implementation of our Managing for Results initiative while also more closely aligning MFR with the county's 
goal of accountable and visionary government. Ultimately, departmental work plans and even employee work plans will support strategic plan goals and objectives. Tools like SAP Enterprise software upgrades, the use of data collection, and analysis programs such as ClearPoint and Power BI, and even dedicated positions to support MFR implementation all support Goal 5. As part of the current fiscal year's budget, the Board approved a compensation and classification study, which will offer a multi-pronged approach to employee compensation that meets the needs of the changing nature of work in the coming decade. The objective is to implement a consistent, competitive classification and compensation system that allows the county to attract, reward, and retain high quality employees. Proposed funding to begin adopting the study recommendations is $3 million for the upcoming fiscal year. The recommended budget also raises the percentage of pay or performance salary increases from 2 to 3 percent to 2 to 4 percent. And we must be able to adequately recognize and support our best employees. Strategic changes in the county's benefit provider save the county a multi-million dollar increase in health insurance costs this current fiscal year. However, due to benefits plans enrollment and health care premium cost increases, the total fiscal year 2018-19 health benefits increase is approximately $3.2 million. I am personally having conversations with Aetna to find reasonable ways to limit cost increases to our benefit package, and I will continue to keep the board updated throughout this budget process in June. With the new Admin 2 building becoming operational soon after the beginning of the new fiscal year, our general, general services staff has been preparing for this additional 168,000 square foot space building, including new staff and other operational costs. Through continued focus on budget reallocation and work efficiencies, the General Services Department was able to absorb nearly half of the $1.2 million of operational costs that come as a result of Admin 2 coming online. As Durham County continues its journey to become a data-driven organization, informed by our performance management system, business process improvements, and data analytics, we'll need to come to the forefront of the technical services provided. To meet this demand, the ISNT budget supports bringing a senior business analyst position up to full time, along with increases in software licensing for support of these critical services. The next several years, we'll see a growing application of business intelligence. In order to meet the ambitious goals and objectives of the strategic plan, the county must collect, protect, analyze, and act on ever-increasing amounts of data and do all of this more efficiently. The foundation of any organization is its employees. And for Durham County, this is especially true. The varied services carried out by our departments are largely born from the daily efforts of, the, of its dedicated workforce. And as, I, and as I continuously say, human capital is in fact our greatest asset. To that end, I am recommending a total of 40.9 new positions Eight new positions are supported by the realignment of vacant positions, while 4.7 are eliminated, largely due to the ending of grant support. 
53 positions that were part of the Durham County Fire and Rescue will transition to the City Fire Department per the soon to be presented into local agreement. The net effect is an overall reduction of 24.75 positions for fiscal year 2018-19. But be prepared for continued requests for position support in future years as we respond to the challenges of today and tomorrow. Durham County is more prepared than any other time in modern history to become a results-driven, outcome-centered organization. A refreshed strategic plan, a strategy for organizational innovation, a systematic approach for collecting and using data, along with a host of talented staff, has our organization prepared to guide Durham County through substantial changes in the coming years. I'm excited about our future and the decisions that we are indeed making to ensure Durham County is a community of choice for everyone. The staff and I look forward to working with you during these budget deliberations as we continuously aim to make Durham the place to live, to grow, and to thrive. Our budget work sessions will begin on Tuesday, May 22nd, where we will provide an overview of the budget, the environment in which it was built, and discuss goal one areas, including Durham Public Schools, Durham Technical Community College, and the Museum of Life and Science. The May 24th work session on Thursday will be a full day and will begin the review of departmental budgets. After the holiday weekend, we will return to the work sessions on Thursday, May 31st, and then another on Monday, June 4th. We will have the public hearing on Monday, June 11th, and a last work session on June 14th. Our budget adoption is planned for June 25th. The documents supporting this budget, the copies can be found on the Durham County website, at the clerk to the board's office, and of course, at the Durham County Regional Libraries. Lastly, and most importantly, I want, thank, I want to thank our departments and other staff for their efforts in developing this recommended budget. Durham County is indeed fortunate to have such dedicated employees. And I would also like to send a special thanks out to the budget staff and our budget director, Keith Lane, our general managers, Gail Harris, Deborah Craig Ray, Claudia Hager, Jody Miller, Jay Gibson, and last but certainly not least, our chief of staff, Drew Cummings, as well as our public information officer for helping to facilitate this process. I look forward to the upcoming conversations with the board as we plan for next fiscal year. Madam Chairman, that concludes my presentation, and I thank you for your undivided attention. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Manager. And um, I know that getting to this point takes a tremendous amount of work. On behalf of, we have many department heads and staff sitting in the audience tonight. I know that, that you all have worked really, really hard on this, um, that this is a, uh, a ground up process that starts in every single department uh, and goes through lots and lots of iterations uh, to before it gets to what we're seeing here tonight. So really want to recognize the months of work that has happened as to thank you everybody for your role in that and the process will continue as our board will take start reading this and uh, go dive into the budget hearings. Uh, I just want to ask 
the so the budget dates that you just shared at the end there. Mm -hmm. um, is there isn't the twenty fifth also a public hearing that night as well? I just want to confirm that. Is it usually? Can I get back to the? Uh, no, it's not. It's just usually on. one public hearing. Okay, but there will be public so comment. Just one public hearing. Yeah, okay, public comment. Only that. Um, so if we can make sure, Monica, if we get have that a part of all of our um, announcements from here on out. So people know about those, um, and so I know that we do not have a calendar yet for the budget hearings. Okay, and I just want to put in um, a request that right on that first day we have a chance to discuss the. I'll wait till Keith is done. Madam Chair, we yes. do have a calendar for we, our budget. Right, but I mean the individual day, which which an agenda. You yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, th those agenda. are forthcoming. An agenda is what I meant. Yeah. Sorry, the agenda. Um, I just want to put in a request that we take up the community input from the community conversations and the survey that first day to help inform our process. Um, Madam Chairman, uh, one other thing I was just reminded of as well, um, we do have uh, the budget portal online, and so for citizens who can not in fact, you know, attend work session meetings or um, the public hearing, they can go online and provide public comment. Okay, great, wonderful. So we'll make sure we get that on our website as well, Dawn, um, and in press release as well. Thank you. Um, and um, any other comments from any other commissioners about the process from here on out? One question on the 24th. Uh, we have the meeting starting at 9 out of the regional hospital. Uh, no, we don't have anything on. We don't have anything for no. the hospital. On my okay, any other clarifications about the schedule? Well, I just, you referenced the 25th. Did you mean the 25th of June? Because we don't have a meeting on May 25th. No, 25th of June is okay. when we adopt the final. We usually have the public hearing at the first regular meeting in June. Okay, so we have um, for schedule for May 22nd, we start at 10 a.m. on the 24th, we start at 9 a.m. and and we have on the 31st at 1 p.m. Yes, on the 31st, one, one o'clock p.m. Don't have that one from May 31st. Mm, yes. Okay. No, May 31st at 9 o'clock, I'm sorry, at 1 o'clock p.m. And on um, June 14th. From 1 to what? 1 to 5. And June uh, 14th, we start at 9 a.m. And June 4th. It's, what else do we have? All oh, right, June fourth at nine nine a.m. That's a work. Oh, that's session. our work session. So are we about? But are we going to add? I think we have a budget meeting starting at one. I have that on my. Right. Exactly. One o'clock. One o'clock. So Monica, if you could make sure that we have all these dates. It sounds like Commissioner Howerton doesn't. Uh, maybe just get a list of every single date and the start time and the end time would be great. Thank you. No, just, just my request be that we don't populate them on our calendar again. Just send it to us in an email so that we don't end up having it on separate dates. Okay. Or having it twice. Right. Okay, great. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Well, thank you very much again. And nice photograph I noticed there. The credits on that photograph. Yeah. W. McLean. Did <laughs> they twisted my arm. That was awesome. Yes, I noticed that. Um, 
So we are now going to move on to our consent agenda. And uh, we have items 18 0673 through uh, 18 0810. Are there any items that commissioners would wish to pull? I would move approval. Okay. I move by Commissioner Reckow, seconded by Commissioner Howerton to approve the consent agenda. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the agenda is unanimously approved. And I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Reckow, seconded by Commissioner Howerton. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And we are, uh, we've approved the adjourn. Thank you.